I didn't watch your lane phase. I don't care about your lane phase, really. My what? Your laning phase. Oh. Let me skim through this. Well, I'm DM. <laughs> I didn't watch it. There was a bunch to talk about without watching it. Um, let me screen share on. Whoopsies, that is not it. That is it. Tell me you can see it. Just tell me if it's potato. No, I can see it. Is it potato? Uh, I need a full screen. It's now it's normal. Okay. Um. So we'll come back to this later, maybe. But uh, what I want to talk about is mainly after the lane. Um. Particularly once you have sidestone. Um. I don't know if you do it on this base. I know once you had the full completed item, you were doing it a lot. First things first. Uh, you shouldn't have shrink it at this point. You should have swapped. Um. Get into the habit of that. Yeah. Easy way I mean, is I just like once you get sightstone, switch the red, right? Yeah. Easy way to do it is once you leave base, ping your ping your sightstone to remind yourself every time right. when you leave the base. You ping your own sightstone and then you check. Okay, that word's fine. What's your next word? That word's fine. Yeah. So your laning warding is fine. Uh, this one's a little sus. Um, well, actually, you see everyone. This I see all fine. everyone did, so I go here. This one's fine. Kill that. Okay, you go mid here. Where do you drop your last word? Let's see, you're hitting the turret, hitting the turret. You guys die. You have one word left, you drop it there. Uh, bad word. Drop it over the ramp all the time. Yeah, the upper, like the bush right above that, right? Yes. Not even the bush, just over the ramp. You don't care. Oh. You don't care about the bush. You want to see them coming before that. Okay. The time is in the bush is too late, and they're never going to stay in the bush, right? If you're doing dragon, they're never sitting in the bush. You just want to see them ASAP. Yeah, I, I just wanted the vision before they, like, in case they come out. Warding that bush is also right. scarier, because if you don't ward the bush, you can ward from... You can ward... From here, okay? You can sit right here, ward over, and you don't have to walk over there and die. So you can hug the bottom left here, towards your side, the wall down here on your left. You can hug that as you walk over, and the Alistar can't come be through there. Mm -hmm. He has to walk out first, and then you just walk away if he walks at you. Okay, so this dragon... Um, so, I missed an ult, I think. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Uh, every single ult, ignore it, okay? I don't care about you missing ult. That shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't care about you missing ult. Um, what does matter is the way you position yourself in fights. There's like a, a common thing in fights. Um, this fight is little less, so it's still not good, but it's not the good, it's, it's not the sort of bad positioning that plagues you in the other fights. In this fight, you're just clumped with your carries. But it's better to be clump with your carries than what you do in a lot of the other fights. Uh, it's this one, you're against Alistar, you sit next to him, you both get comboed. Um, the main thing here is um, where you should be at the start of this is the problem. So you, you should not be in the pit. You should be literally sitting right there and this guy has a jump. He, if, he, if this goes bad, he can bail and you leave him to bail. This happens like, if you're, okay, so... If their jump, if your jungler is ever this deep in, no matter who he's playing, like I don't care if he has a jump or not, like he's uh -huh. committed to himself to his own fate. Like uh -huh. he's not your problem anymore. That's I feel like part of your positioning issues in the other fights will, is because you care about your team too much. Um. So yeah, the the, the problem is you you see Alistar literally this whole time. You guys literally see Alistar this whole time. He's just waiting for you guys to get dragon low, and then. The problem is you're so deep into the pit that when he finally commits, it's too late for you to get out. You can't actually run. That's your main problem here. Like yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because so. you're... The thing is, you don't understand how valuable you are alive in a fight. That's your big problem with a lot of this. Like, if you just stay alive, regardless of, like, your ult and stuff, and regardless of, like, maybe if you'd went in deeper to heal someone, they would have lived and you would have died, your value is insane if you stay alive. Especially if it's a game where you can build sensor. And you could have in this game, wouldn't have been amazing, but it's buildable. So this is where... This is the part of the game where I start watching, and this is the part of the game where your issues with warding are like super apparent because you are really bad at warding out of lane. That's the big thing I've noticed. You have no idea what you're doing out of lane. Um, that's why I don't want to talk about lane as much. Um, so when you're out of lane, um, it's obvious like you know your job is to ward. Um, how the fuck did your... I hate Twitch VODs. Your Ezreal dies. I think he just gets jumped by Ori and Kha'Zix like right here or something. Yeah, he just dies right there. Unmute the VOD. So he dies right here. 
and then you're kind of in an awkward position because you can't get priority anymore because your Ezreal is dead. Um, first off, why are you not warning this bush? <laughs> that you have no control of your you have no control of anything. Kha'Zix could literally be right here. You want to ward this from max range. Don't walk okay. in like that. Like Kha'Zix can literally be right here, right here, and okay. you're dead if you face check him. If he comes out to you, if he's not R evolve, then you guaranteed at least try to get a flash out. Might not even need the flash. I think we should normally ward that if we don't have our um. For, like, since Doesn't matter. Doesn't ward. matter. That's the thing about your warding. You're way too stingy with your wards. The thing is about especially like a Sona and a Janna is that you can actually just fucking drop all your wards, base fast, get more, and you just run back, and you're super fast. Like, just drop your fucking wards. You don't care about your charges at all. It's better to be in a position where you ran out of wards at the end than be in a position where you're always holding on to excess wards. Always. Okay. okay. So you lose your flash there because you can't walk in the area with Kha'Zix around. Um, here, it's kind of just odd because your Israel's dead. Um, what you should do here is you drop your ward here and then you walk around, walk around to the to the uh, Warwick because you don't see where their mid lane is. Yeah. Um, basically, you don't ever want to. I'm sure you've heard this. It's like the mid lane wave is the like the line of scrimmage. You don't cross yeah. it. You don't cross it, and then like if they're not showing at the line of scrimmage, then you know you know they're they're probably waiting somewhere to try to kill you, and they are here. And I don't even know where Kazix comes from, but yeah, bot side whatever. He comes, you have to flash. Flash is fine. The problem is you should never have been in the position where you had to flash. Mm -hmm. Next point. Uh, I hate Twitch VODs. I can't you use can arrow keys. Like, um, right arrow key, right? Doesn't that speed up? Oh, I can. I have to actually be clicked on this though. So I can't like tab out to, to like look at my notepad, which is annoying. YouTube lets me. Okay, oh, so. Two, two screens, bro. No. Is whatever. Is whatever. So you follow here. I can't tell if your bot is. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Oh, is it up? Uh, I think it's still up here. Uh, is it? I can't. Okay, yeah, it's up. Okay. That's fine. Holding on to your wards here, that's fine. With Ezreal here. Okay, so here's your problem here. Um, you don't need to be in lane. Right mm -hmm. here. Um, if you have coin or relic... Um, if you have coin, you still leave. If you have relic, you can pop your shit and then go. But you have fucking spell thieves. Warwick is walking in the river. Go follow him and drop your wards. You have two wards. Like, you waste all this time helping him push, he doesn't need your help to push. We're 30, 13 minutes in, in the game, he doesn't need your help killing this, go ward. Like, he's literally right behind you, go ward. If Kha'Zix jumps you, you press R, he doesn't insta-kill you, Warwick shows up, he presses R, and you can use your pressure to get this turret or this turret off the kill, if he tries to kill you, and he will try to kill you, because just, like, that's what everyone does. Like, it's not about following him, it's just that when he's there, use him. Okay. Like you don't have to follow him, but like if he's there, you have to, you should be using his presence. Like and so I was uh, like I guess I guess I'll just talk about this now because <clears throat> we're kind of towards the topic. Um, if we take the the perfect world, okay, we take the perfect world League of Legends game, and we let's say we assume every role contributes exactly twenty percent can can contribute up to exactly twenty percent of the portion needed to win, okay. So if we just take, like, th this is obviously theoretical, but, like, if we say every role contributes up to 20% to a win, and but, like, hitting that 20% marker is, like, mm -hmm. really, really hard, and for some champions, it's, like, outright impossible because your champion's just, like, not good enough, okay? But, so, but in this hypothetical, where every, every role can go up to 20%, if we take, um, so for the support role, let's say you can't get to 20% playing peel supports, okay? But you can get up to like maybe fifteen percent, and then like mm -hmm. that last like twenty percent, you can only like last five percent. You can only hit the top twenty, like the 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 max, if you're playing like aggressive supports, okay. Mm -hmm. But you can go so say up to like fifteen with peels, okay. And but the thing about peels is that like, let's say like the low end for peel supports is like five percent, and the upper is like fifteen. But for like aggressive supports, say the low end is like one percent, and the upper is like twenty percent, okay. So okay. the thing about the peel supports is that. And the, the, the thing about support in general is that your play constitutes only maybe like, I'd say up to 15 for aggressive supports and 10 for peel supports. That extra max 5 to get to the max 15 for peel supports, <clears throat> that doesn't come into account with strictly your gameplay. That comes into account with how you communicate with your team. And that's a big problem I see um, when I'm, I'm watching you play 
not just peel supports, but every support in general. You're uh-huh. the type of player who you float. Uh, I'll say you float around that like five to ten range, percentage wise. You're never useless. You're never gonna be the dude who like outright loses your team the game. But you're almost never going to be that dude who outright wins your team the game either. And part of that, yes, is because you are playing appeal support. But the other part of that is you're kind of just there, you know. At the end of the game, like. If no one was just like hard carrying, you're gonna be that guy that everyone honors just because you're playing support, and like they's like, oh wow, this guy shielded me in a fight. I gotta honor him, something like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's you, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that, especially game to game. And it's good to be like, to have like a consistent like kind of baseline. But the thing is like, you want to strive to hit that like fifteen percent, and a lot of that comes with pinging like. Like this, this, like this is. Uh, I bring it up now because if this is me, <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. The second I see Warwick walk into the river, wow, my bod. Okay. The second I see Warwick walking up here, I literally just follow him. He, if he starts on the scuttle, I start pinging assistance for fifty times onto this blue buff because I want to contest his blue buff and I want to go ward. I literally ping assist me fifty times and then I say, come, like, come take blue or whatever, whatever I want to type, and I just force him to make the play with me because I know like it's it's good or at the very least like I want to get the boards you know if they're like all there like we see like three of them Alistar is down there and then I'm gonna assume there's maybe two but at the very least I get my wards okay and then I ping like whenever I want to roam 50 on my way pings you know and then that gets the attention of people and they come with you and <clears throat> the thing is like you're just there you know a lot of the time you're, you're kind of just there you're just sitting here, and like I said, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it's like, if you're really trying to squeeze as much as you can out of your performance to helping your team win every game, it has to be more than just a play. And <laughs> this is this is just really greedy, like hitting. Like there it's okay, because Orianna's low, but generally you don't ever want to step up for fucking spell thief stacks there. Um, you'll use one more ward here. I don't like this ward either. Um, a little bit deeper. Like at where there's there's there. two ways you can place this ward. One, you want to place it outside of the bush, like on this mm-hmm. ramp right here where my cursor is. You can see it, right? Yeah. So like right deep out there, because then if they try to cross behind, uh, like behind you on this ramp, or they try to cross through, um, the the bush near red, or like just cross through here, it'll see them. And if they walk into the bush, you'll see them. You don't actually care if they're in the bush as long as you know they're in the I bush. I think I just didn't want to like walk face first into Kazix here. Okay, then you just ward over the ramp here. Ah, okay. You can just ward over the ramp here. But in general, like, the other thing is you can literally just sweep this to check if he's in there, and if he's uh-huh. not in there, yeah. then you can walk uh, in. I recognize that now, seeing my sweeper up. Okay. And then uh, the other thing you don't do enough is you don't ward the lane enough. Um, that's just a thing no one really does enough, but it's easy. Just, like, before your base, or if you think... Yeah, ward the lane. Ward the middle of the lane. Okay. It's really important because um, if you're keeping river ward up, and you have a lane board up, you basically know where everyone is going to be at all times. Basically. Like, if you have, like, board here, board here, board here, wherever they cross, you know where they're going to be. You know, you might not know exactly, like, if Alistar crosses upwards and disappears, like, yeah, you won't know exactly where he is, but you know what side of the map he's on. And if he wants to cross back, like, he's probably going to cross through the middle, right? He's not going to go around through their own jungle because he feels safe. So he's going to cross through the red buff bush into mid lane, and if you have wards there, you'll see him. Same thing with Kha'Zix, you know, he's, unless he's only farming, like, he's not going to go, um, like, through around his own jungle and looping back to gank, right? He's literally just going to walk in a straight line on the edges of their jungle to get into the river, and then if you have those wards there, you'll always see him, so you never get jumped. Um, so you stay here, Oriana chunks you here. Where does he even come from? Okay, yeah, you're trading with him, he ults you. Uh... You don't want to be in a position there to get ulted because you don't know who you don't know who's there, especially because you see Alistar come out there. The second you see like one person come out of fog, like especially if it's like an aggressive champion, you need to back the fuck up. Like you should not be challenging this at all. There's no point challenging. If if Kazakh is here, you're dead instantly. Don't risk that. Okay. Even with your ult, there's no point. Okay, so you need to take a base for wards. Like you should literally just drop your last ward here and then take a base. Because you got nothing, but shove it. Yeah, you had your one ward left. It's fine, buy your items. And that's the other thing. You're not aggressive with your pink wards at all. 
Um, yeah. That's like a huge issue. Well, how, I mean, what, what does it mean to be aggressive in Tinkle? Is like putting it deep in theirs? So here, uh, I'll give you, I'll tell you exactly. So, okay, here's the, the conservative the wards thing. Uh, ward over here. <laughs> like, ward over here. Because basically, um, you're never going to be able to do this objective because of this guy, okay? This yeah. guy is getting shoved in all the time. We're dead to this guy. So you're never gonna, you don't want, you don't care about this. You're, it's not gonna ever do anything. Um, your bot tower, I believe, is still up. So you wanna secure the bot river for a rotate so they can never feel safe to push up and take your turret. And the best way to do that, you, you drop your, your first ward here. And then the thing is like, you literally have Warwick. What you do here is you ping 50 times, like assist me and on my way. So he follows you into the river so you can go ward. Same thing here. So like, who cares about going for the fucking Caitlyn? Like the guy, if the guy is not retarded, he's not gonna stay there and hit the turret. And that pink ward is useless. That's like what I'm talking about. That like you don't pink ward aggressively. Like, realistically, what is that gonna do, right? Who's ever gonna walk past try at this point in the game, right? Because okay. Caitlyn's not gonna walk up through try. He's fucking booking it every time he walks up I mean, to hit uh, your if turret. I know where they're not at. I could know that where they are at. Yeah, no. <laughs> So yeah, once again, like you're sitting here getting CS, right? Look at Warwick, he's warding alone. You could be there with him. If you're there with him, guess what? You ult the Oriana, he ults the Oriana, they're dead. And the other thing is you don't you're not seeing what's happening. That's F key thing, but we can that's a whole different thing in and of itself. Am I dropping frames? No. Okay, yeah, this is looks like Was it dropping frames? Oh no, Twitch Twitch player, which is being ass. Yeah, classic. Okay. So yeah, imagine if you're here at the start, right? You got an ult here, oh man, would have been them all dead. This all's fine. But yeah, here's the, here's the thing, right? If you had this ward here mm -hmm. earlier, like you would have seen it's a control, and maybe this fight would have gone differently. You know, I don't exactly know how this fight goes because you pan your camera too late. But like, imagine if you were with Warwick here, if you were just warded things earlier, right? They would have been fighting dark. You might have had the control. You might have not even had escalated to this point because you were just ulted Ori into Warwick ult into Velkos shit. They all have all died, and then you know you wouldn't be behind the play. But you're behind the play because you go down for no reason. You got to play. Like, whenever you have a chance, you want to take that chance to go ward. And that's what you don't do outside of laning phase. Like, your laning phase warding is fine, because laning phase warding is easy. Uh, mm -hmm. All the out, out of lane phase warding is game sense. Um, that comes with, like, playing more or, like, being told, like, what your opportunities were. Like, you had all these opportunities. And, like, the other thing is, like, all the way, if we go all the way back, back to when you still have your control, like, you can literally take full control of the river here. Because Alistar takes the base here, you're back on your timing, because you base first. You literally drop your ward here. You now you know that there's a control there. You would have cleared the control. You would have dropped a control. Your control in the the pixel bush, and then you can walk with um, Warwick to ward up here or ward up here. However deep you feel brave enough going, because you have mid priority and you have your jungler, and you know one of them at least one of them based and probably Ori too, because she was low earlier. And then suddenly you know everywhere they're going. And then on top of this, like this is just like I understand why you want to go down, but you need to understand like. The, you're at the point where like people aren't so dumb that they're literally just gonna like like the Caitlyn is not gonna sit there and die like this is gold elo shit you know like the the chase here this is literally gold elo shit like this is I know plat like like I don't think plat ones much like you'll see me talk shit talk plat ones all the time but like it realistically yeah it, it it's a pretty big step up from gold fucking five like people aren't gonna die to this fucking play so you need to understand that and just take your chance to ward and alternatively like if even if it only warwick went and the caitlin like for some reason stayed warwick would probably be able to kill him and this is another thing um this is just part of the like you care about your team too much like don't fucking go this way just go around if he dies here he dies here like and he pings you give like it's his fault for being here in the first place like this whole thing is literally his fault for being there in the first place and like you're just a very high chance that if you follow him here you just die too literally just go around and then if he makes it to this blast plant, and then you can help them. But you that's a recurring thing with you. You need to take the safe way um, a lot of the time. I don't remember this. I think Kha'Zix just jumps you from the side because... Uh, oh, he oh he was our stealth. Yeah, you just don't look at... You just you see him, actually. But I, I just don't think he reacted because he showed up for like half a second. Uh, okay. He stealthed in between bushes and jumped you. This is whatever. You just didn't look at your map. That, that happens. This it was not this is not because you're bad warding. This is just because Kha'Zix had our evolve. So that's, that one's a little bit more acceptable. Um, buy a second control here. So the reason for the second control at this point in the game, as soon as lane phase ends, you should be trying to get two controls every single time. The first one is you want to place aggressively. And the second one is if you get a chance to either place it more aggressively or they clear your aggressive one so you have a backup. Okay. So basically, if we rewind to this point, this play, or this point in the game, like 
this point where you could have warded the river with him. Yeah. Basically, if you ward the river with him, and let's say that same fight starts, but you're there, so you turn the fight, you guys win it 2-0, and you get mid turret off of it, the second control ward is in your inventory, so you can place it deeper, and then when you base, you have two more, and then they clear that one because it's deep, but you get information off of it, and then you place another one, like in like pixel bush or something, and then it happens again, you know? But let's say this time, instead of winning the fight, you guys lose the fight, right? And they clear your control, then you have one more to place shallow, so like, maybe like right here, or like right here, so when they come into your jungle after winning the fight, you see them come in and you don't get ambushed, okay? Mm. Your gold isn't worth that much. You you spend it on your controls. Okay. It's not competitive, so you don't need three, but two is just the sweet spot. So like, if I already have a control down, or I already have three wards down, but I mean, there's like a spot I want to put it in, so I just put it down. Always, always replace your wards. Always replace your wards. You don't care about them living to duration. It's very, very rare where... Because the thing about how your warding should be is that, like, um, if you're warding in the same area and you're replacing, so let's say, like, you, you ward up bot side, okay? There's a fight, you base, you come back, mm -hmm. and you still your three wards are still alive, and you go back to bot side again because bot side is where the next play is going to happen. Just reward because you, you want your wards to be up there. You don't want them to expire, right? You don't know when you're going to get another chance. And the other thing is, if there's a fight bot side, right, and you had all your wards there, and then, you know, you base after, and the next play is topside. Of course you're going to move your vision, right? Because the bot side okay. plays over. So regardless, you should always be moving your wards. Okay. Okay, um, so this is whatever. Come out of base, one control. There's a dragon fight. Okay, so you're watching the dragon fight. That's good. He's getting poked. Your team is very questionable. So do the dragon here, healing up your team. That's fine. So yeah, uh, word drop one word there, just right. like, just like you want to make sure you know where they're going, you know, like, oh. I just like, because like, we're not gonna be like dragging that the objective is gonna. You just want you just want one to see where they're going. You want to okay. see like if he's gonna try to cross greedy. Like if he tries to cross greedy, then you can just cut him off here. And you want to basically if you drop the word there, you scare him into going all the way around. So you have the inside track middle. You okay. just drop one because the thing is you have four, right? So yeah. if if theoretically, so like. In a perfect world, what should happen here is you guys are going to go set up around topside vision, right? So, and you can only have three wards down at a time anyway, right? So you just drop one here, and then you force them to respect you, and then you go up, and you drop your three, and then you take your base. And then, like, mm -hmm. by the time, like, you're up there dropping your three, you don't need this ward anymore anyway. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. <clears throat> so, clearing this, it's fine. So... The thing I talked about earlier, where it's like um, you don't ping enough, you don't tire your team enough, I feel like a lot of that stems, and the, a lot of that for, for most people stems because they're not 100% sure what they should do. So here's here's your checklist, okay? Um, number one, check where your jungler is, okay? If your jungler's farming fucking Krugs, don't go ward. If their jungler is any, sh if they, anyone, if there's anyone on the enemy team who's like a face check threat for you, like, mm -hmm. and like, you don't, you're not Rakan, so you can't fucking jump out 40 times, then you don't go, you wait for your jungler, and you tell him, or you either tell him, or you ping 50 times, need help ward, or, like, you, like, just, like, somehow, you, you, you give him the message that you need help warding, unless your mid laner is, like, got a big dick, he's 10-0, and he's just shoving, he's got mid priority for you permanently, then you just, then you just go with him, or, like, as soon as he has a push for you, then you go, um, one of those two. Like, you always want that, and then once you have vision in the area, the easiest way, if you're ahead, to win is you literally just walk into their jungle with the strongest people next to you, and you just walk at them and start a fight, because that's gonna that's literally going to work most of the time, and if you're strong, you can just start Baron, too. Um, so, what happens here? So, you take a base here that I don't like. Um, I'm not even sure how you get chunks. What was it? Uh, they just literally just runs at you. Okay, here's the thing, you're full mana Sona. Granted, you don't have tier, but like, you know where they all are. You can literally just walk up through, heal yourself, keep walking up through here, and then just like drop shallow wards at least, you know? Okay. Because uh, at the very least, you want shallow wards. If you don't feel safe, like, you, as soon as you see Kha'Zix, I, I, that's why I cancel the base, you know? And then I just go. Because I, as soon as you see Kha'Zix, you know exactly where everyone on the team yeah. is, and you, you're safe to go ward. Like, I, I know you're missing health, but like, who cares about your missing health because you have a heal and 
this is further reinforced. The second you see Alistar, like that group should be like alarm bell number two. Like, oh wait, they're going bottom. Like I can just go ward this, and we can maybe go do rift. Um, like that's that's like in your head. Like that's what you should. This should be like it's not even like a checklist thing. This is literally just like a a push and pull thing. Like they're ganking bot lane. Like we need to like see if I can do anything top. Like and that's just something that I mean, but like your team doesn't always come with you is a thing. <clears throat> this is where you ping fifty times. And then if they don't come, then you tried, okay? But okay. it's it's like you can't have the defeatist like, well sometimes they don't. Well yeah, of course sometimes they don't, because it's fucking solo queue. But you have you give yourself a chance if you tell them like, hey, let's do this and like most of the time, once you get to like slits, like around like D five level, people will understand very very basic macro play of hey, there's four bottom. How about we do an opposite side objective? And in this case, oh, it's red. My team was D four and D five. Uh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because the thing is like knowing something and like being the driving force to do it is like two very different things. And this happens to me too. It's like sometimes I really don't want to. You know, I sometimes I really don't want to talk to anyone. That's why I'm playing League of Legends, and then when I'm playing League of Legends, I don't want to talk to them either. I know in my head, like, if I literally had, like, 4,000 APM and I was typing literally everything that went through my head that I know is the right play the whole time, my win rate would go up a lot. But, you know, sometimes I just don't want to, I don't want to type because I'm playing League of Legends to not talk to people. But, you know, if you're in the best interest of winning, like, sometimes you take DL. Okay, so... Game plague starts raging. You're mid lane for no reason. Once again, um, so run me through your thought process here, cause I'm baffled. Uh, wait, so, uh, like, while I'm here? Yeah. I, I thought Warwick could handle bottom, but then there's three. <laughs> what are you doing here? So like, you're pushing so middle. I three bottom. And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get there in time. So I don't know. <laughs> Like, I, I saw Warwick there with two, and I was like, oh, he can hold two. And then I see three, I was like, well, even though I'm there, it's not going to help. So I just come up with Olaf. Okay. Well, come, okay, coming up at this point is fine. It's just like... Here's, I to shove the mid lane, Here's the thing, like, you don't shove mid fast enough for your support. If you're playing solo lane, that's the right play. You're playing like, support. What I, what I was originally thinking was, um, <laughs> bottom, I didn't think to go rip. I thought we could take mid. But then my mid laner and um, as soon as okay that line of thought is completely fine until the, you see these guys channel base. As soon yeah. as these guys channel base, you have to abort that and go help bottom. Even mm -hmm. like it's not even like you have to like help them. It's literally you just be there because there's nowhere else to be. Like you don't want to push the midway. Like you don't push it in time. And um, if Oriana shows up, then you literally get pushed out anyway. You might as well be bottom. I realize abort. I'm not gonna get mid. <laughs> yeah, but that should be going off like a lot faster in your mind. Yeah. Is the problem. Okay, so Olaf ints, normal, help work here, once again, you don't need to babysit him on the blue buff, you can go ward, unfortunately, like, so you have two options here, okay, um, so here, I'll walk you through the thought process as I would see it, mid is getting pushed in, okay, so wait, so let me see exactly when you can leave this guy, as soon as Olaf is finished with his inting spree, okay, so he revives with GA, um, you see two people mid. Go mid. Re maybe, maybe you can wait for, wait for the EXP here. Um, maybe not all of it. Like maybe just like run through here and then start leaving. But like you need to get there because like as soon as you see two people middle, you can like kind of start to guess where this is going. And then Velkos gets pushed off the wave, and you see the wave coming. Like that's like the the last chance, and like, you like the last alarm in your head. Like you need to like I need to be mid now. You're late to the play, and you don't even go to the play. Like you you actually. Are scared off crossing by Ori, um, and it's fine to be scared off crossing. The problem is you should have crossed a long time ago, and because you you get scared off initially by the Ori, and then you're just like, you know what, I'm just not gonna end up going anyway. And then the obvious hat, like, like, don't get me wrong, this guy should never have died. Like, I'm pretty sure he dies to literally just Caitlyn. Like, let's let's take a look at his health because you don't ping. I mean, I mean, you don't uh, pan your camera. Like, I'm pretty sure he gets soloed by Caitlyn. Yeah, he literally gets soloed by Caitlyn, which should never happen in any sense. It should never ever happen. Just straight up, never should ever happen. Especially because Caitlyn isn't even fed at this point. But like, you should still be there. Like, regardless of him like horribly misplaying somehow to actually get one v one by Caitlyn as Velkaz without ulting, like you should still be there because like you should. 
you being at blue does nothing. You being at top, sure, if you want a little bit of EXP, go. But you don't stay the whole time the second you see that they're committed to middle. That's the problem. Like, mid-priority is, like, the biggest, most important thing for you um, outside of the lane phase. Because if you don't have mid-priority, you can't do anything, right? So, like, let's take a look, okay? So, if we live in a world where you never have mid-priority. So, let's say, we like, we live in a world where this wave is literally always here, okay? What's going to happen the second you walk up here to ward? Collapse. Yeah, exactly, because they see you right here, right? They literally see you from right here, and you have to walk all the way up to here to fucking ward. No mm -hmm. shit, you're gonna die every fucking time. That's why you want mid-priority. And that's why mid-priority is the most important thing to you. Um, because you can't do anything safely without it. Like, even with your jungler, right, in some cases. Like, if even if you go with your jungler, it's just gonna be him who dies instead of you, and the end result is the same. You can't get mid-priority, you can't ward, you can't do anything. And you're stuck hoping to god they throw a baron or something. Which does happen a lot, but like you don't ever want to be in a world where you're like relying on that. You'd rather just take the take the advantage and push it. So another team fight starts here. Caitlyn dies. Got ult from him. Blah blah blah. Doesn't matter. You have one ward left. Where do you use your wards? I'm actually not sure. Let's rate your warding. Well, it was that blue over the blue wall. Okay, so this is one of them. Um, that's fine. And then in the bush, the little side bush by side back. bush, that's fine. And your last, last one. one the three, the the um, and then I put my pink in the pit. That's fine, because you guys are going to be the bear. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is fine. All this is fine. Okay, this is a problem. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. you're playing like a zone support. You're not a zone support. Okay. Okay, you, you, you don't zone. You're, you play Rakan, you do this. You play Alistar, you do this. You play Thresh, you throw the hook from here. You play any. You play Braum, you walk at them. You play Janna, Sona, Karma, Nami, you're right here. Okay. You're right here. You make sure you're out of pole range, okay? Because what you want to happen, ideally, so the ideal fight is Alistar goes in because he has to go in. You know he's going to go in. So you make sure when he goes in, he doesn't hit you. And the second he goes in and doesn't hit you, he's not going to kill your carries by himself, right? No fucking chance. This, so this is when being Sona Janna Karma Nami comes in. You don't get comboed. Alistar can't kill your carries by himself, right? So Alistar is going to go in first because he's the initiation. He's going to go in, he's going to press R, he's going to be tanky as fuck, he's going to cause a bunch of shit, but he's got cooldowns, he doesn't do damage himself. As long as you don't get hit in the initial combo, you don't get AoE'd, Someone has to kill your carries, and it's not going to be Alistar. The second those some people come up, you Hold hit on. them with your, your tidal wave, you hit them with your crescendo, you kill yeah. them off with your monsoon, whatever. Okay? But the most important thing is you don't die. Because let's take the situation, okay? It's a three, it's a four on two right now, okay? With mm -hmm. GP being in Mexico. He's not mm -hmm. part of this play. He's fled the country. There's three people here. This guy is tanking the Baron, so he's not able to head these people off. Mm -hmm. These two are, um, you're not a tank support, and you don't have your fifth player here. These guys are going to get comboed, okay? But the thing is, if you're not there at all, Alistar is literally nothing to worry about. Because this guy's not part of the play, this guy is being occupied by Baron, and he just walks in, right? But if you're sitting right here, you just, you, the Alistar has to respect the fact that you're there. And mm -hmm. he has to understand, the enemy team has to respect the fact that you're there. And they have to take into account, if the Alistar goes in and we want to follow up, we have to get past the peel support. But when you walk up like that and you offer yourself up, it's so much easier for them to approach the play because they just run at you instead. Okay. And then your carries are in a bad situation where they don't have any peel because you're the peel and you're the one engaged on. And if you die, there's nothing protecting them anymore and they just have to run. You know, okay. the second you um, position yourself in a way that you can stop the follow up, then it's very easy for your carries to do their job because you set them up. Like the same thing with like, it's just it works differently for other champions. Like as Karma, you literally just slow them and then run, and you just keep yeah. slowing them, slowing them. You stay alive and shield. As Janna, you wait for them to go, and then you monsoon. As Sona, you wait, and Sona Nami, uh, Nami can kind of tidal wave preemptively, but as like Sona, obviously you just wait, and then you hit the follow up, and you and you just go off mm -hmm. that. Um, the main problem with you is you don't respect like your own impact in the fights and you like walk up too far and die a lot of the time. This is just like this is kind of a meme, but like 
Like this 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 one is like a meme. Like this one was just like very obvious. Like you just stepped up too far. Um and everyone on your team like flubs the play. I'm pretty sure like everyone just walks in and dies like one by one. Yep. Like this guy dies and like somehow Ezreal dies. I don't fucking understand why. But yeah, that's not important. We're focusing on it. So you get your redemption, you get your Aegis. Okay, so you go ward. And see this is the thing that uh it doesn't really confuse me, because it's actually pretty common. It's just odd how, like, in this case, you recognize that you're completely safe to ward, so you go yeah. ward alone. But in other cases where you are completely safe to ward, you don't recognize them, and you don't go ward. And that's, like, the weird thing. Um, I mean, like, I see all the entrances to this area, so... Okay, so that's that's why you feel safe in this one? Okay, yeah. that's fair. Like, Kha'Zix is bottom, and I, like, have, already have... Like deeper ward, so I can clear. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's, I know that's fair. Then that's your control in the Baron, right? Yep. Okay. So this is where having two controls. Um, well, actually, not in this case scenario. Well, I have to see your team. Like, oh, you actually hit tab. Perfect. Pause. Okay. In this case, you actually do move your control to this, and you save this ward. Um, because you just tell someone else on your team to control the pit, mm -hmm. and then you use all your words out here, your normal words, and you use your control word right there, or use it in this bush uh, okay. next to the lane, because um, the easiest one for them is um, the one in the pit, so you keep that one. Um, and but in this case, if you're not paying attention to your team's controls or like they don't have any controls. Um, so you have to keep yours here. Don't kill these wards. There's no point in killing these wards. You're just wasting your time. Just use this like time. Gold. Just use this time to uh, go get deeper wards because, like you said, I mean, you I know you're safe. That right there is already mine. Like the one in like the entrance. This. Yeah. Who cares? It's about to expire. You have three. Go ward deeper because the thing is, like, you always want as much advance notice as you can, and every like, it's rare this late into the game to have a free chance to ward like unaccosted so okay. the thing is you kill this ward this is fine while you're killing this you're kiting upwards and sometimes i would even just leave this ward for a little bit to use your time to go kill mm -hmm. to, to go deep ward first because you can always come back and kill this whenever you want okay. um because the thing is like if you just walk over into the whatever that bush right here ward over the wall walk over to the wall next to the rafters ward into the rafters pit and then drop your last ward in the middle of the lane and keep your last one for whatever you know maybe if they start coming if you guys end up starting the bear you have one left on you and that's fine okay like having all those wards is way more valuable than killing these wards for gold especially because these wards aren't even doing anything at this point and you know if you want then you can walk in and drop a ward over there too if you don't feel safe going for that one that's fine too but you don't do that either and then, because you waste your time killing those wards, like, let's, we're going back to the ideal world scenario, okay? Where, like, you realize it's pointless to kill these wards and you're with your team here. And when the play happens, right? You know, granted, this play goes fine anyway because Oriana's just fronting while her whole team's bottom. But, like, in a, in a different world, there's a fight that starts there and you're not there. And then your team gets wiped, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to, like, it's just better to be with your team at that point. And now, like, you have another chance. Why? Why are you walking away, right? You see their whole team coming through middle because they were just bottom. You just got pick. You have three fucking wars on you. Go drop them in the jungle. Go drop them in the jungle. You have full Baron control. You have your whole team with you to go ward with you, and you're holding on all your wards. So, fight starts here. Okay, you're fine here. Playing with your carries. Good. Providing auras this whole time. Look how much value you're giving to your team just by being alive. Ward over to this rafters wall. Uh, you don't want any dark spots. As soon as the fight starts, you don't want any dark spots. You really should drop a ward either here or here or both. Okay. Okay. So like, there's nothing wrong with that ward. It just can be better. Like, just put it deeper. Okay. It's just better deeper. Like, and and it's okay. just as safe. So just drop it deeper than you are. Currently, your team rotates to bottom because you guys want this dragon. What is this mountain drag? All right, fine. So once again, where's your wards? So like. You guys push him back, right? Because Oriana's dead. You guys push him back. You have mid priority, and why are you walking this way, right? Why are you walking this way? And we can walk up through here and drop drop wards here. Mm -hmm. Like you can drop it in this bush. Granted, someone pinks this bush for you, and you can drop yeah. it near the blue. Like you, like who cares that someone on your team pinked it? Like you just 
This, okay, if you're behind them and they pink that first, fine. Drop your ward here and then drop the next one over here. Okay. But like, if they're not there, like, you never even were in the position to get ready to drop it where this is. And you really want this ward and you really want a ward at the blue because then you have advance notice from every single angle they're coming from. So basically in the award deeper generally. Yes, generally speaking, yes. And yeah, just that word sucks. Don't do that word unless like So it's just better over the wall. It's just rather. always better over the wall, basically. Yeah. The only time that word is ever okay is if you can't walk up to the wall to ward and like for some reason you're safe in this like maybe you have this controlled and you just like don't want to walk up to the wall and you just want to like step out like an inch out of this bush to just board this as shallow as you can because you can't walk over the ramp, then okay. But almost every other situation it's it's worse. Okay. So you guys do the drag, that's fine. Um, small thing here, um, just in general, you don't want to be the first person like walking through here. Let Warwick be the first guy, okay. be behind your whole team like right here, just in case. Yeah, just in case something dumb happens. Like you don't want to be like the first one dead. You just want to be like let if they have a chance to engage. Like let's say like theoretically like I guess this isn't even that far fetched like. They were just like all over here, right? If you're behind and they all jump in, like if you're behind, like so, I'll take it a little further back. If you're right, freeze frame, boom, you're right here, okay? And Kazix and Alistar jump over this fucking wall with Ori Ball on them, and they go. You can literally just as soon as they jump over, you fucking are them, and they're done. Yeah, okay. But instead, like you would have been caught here into the Ori, Alistar, Kazakh combo, and you're just dead, and then this fight's over. It's just like a good habit to get into, just being behind everyone. Because like, once again, like your job is always going to be to counter-engage when you're appeal support. You know, it might not feel like appeal support as Sona, because like, the effect of what you do isn't like as pronounced as like Janna yeah. literally appealing everyone, but like, the, the way you should be playing fights in your general role is the same. Um, so this is like, like I, I, you, I think you were like completely like, oh man, I can't believe I fucked up this all. Like, the, like, the, we don't care about the execution because the execution comes with playing more no matter what mm -hmm. this is exactly what you should be ulting you know in yeah. a different world this is darius and he gets fucked by this ulti and in a different world you angle it a little better and it hits both of them the concept of what you're trying to do here is like fine like as you were just fucking hits so like yeah you do miss the ori by a little bit and yes he is olaf but like most of the time like that ult is fine and that's what matters. This guy can't kill you, so you walk away. Warwick dies. Take your base here. It's all fine. Don't have enough controls on you. Okay, going to the Baron. Uh, are they off the Baron? I mean, I guess they're off it. Uh, what happens here? Okay. <laughs> um, this is basically like the same. I saw one person back. I thought they were back. Yeah, it's the same con. Like, well, first I off, you have wording over the wall. Yeah, the word over the word over the wall before you start hitting, because like, once you start hitting, they know exactly where you are because they're gonna have persistent vision of you. Okay. When you walk over and hit the sweep the first time, they'll see you for like a for a millisecond. Okay, maybe not a millisecond, but they won't see you very long, and then you can ward over first, and then if you see them, obviously you just run. Yeah. Um, and also, you can kill this ward from further back than you are. I'm not really sure what the, the walking out of at the end there is. Okay, you get caught. Happens. Easy fix. Uh, Warwick goes full retard. Gets appropriately pinged for it. Team's on the run. Meeting up with your team. Heal him up. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Playing with your team, that's fine. Okay, get mid priority, get mid priority, get mid priority. There's a GPO warding there. Okay, ward here in this situation. Drop your ward over here. Oh, this ward is so good. This ward is so good. Drop. Uh, I didn't feel safe going there. No, just ward, ward it over the wall. Ward it from oh, this. Okay. Ward it. Ward it from this angle right here. Right here. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Perfect. This is like this. It's a safe ward, and it gives you so much info. If this is pinked. Like, you don't even care if this okay. is pinked. So, what's the difference between, like, warding over that wall versus, like, warding right in the middle here? Like, because if you over that wall, you won't see people that go around the red bush. You want... So you're saying this versus this? Yeah. The, if this... If you ward this, if they come from this angle, you have an advanced notice. If they, they have this... If they have this pinked, then you see them here. 
And the thing is, basically you have three wards. You always want a ward here, you want a ward up here, okay. and you want a ward in the lane usually. So you would use a second ward up there, that's why. Yeah, because you don't want to skimp on this area. This is the most important area. Okay. Because this is where they attack from. Yeah, it makes sense. This is always where they're going to attack from. They're never going to attack from up here except very odd scenarios. I think I just probably put a ward in the middle so I could see both. Yeah. Because um, the amount of advanced... Oh god, what the fuck? Why is he there? The amount of advanced notice you get from this versus this is huge because if wow. this is a very common pink spot, right? So if they pink this and they want to kill your ward, then you literally see them like 10 to 15 seconds out before they even hit the Baron. And then if, let's say you guys are like pressuring around the Baron, you see them kill this ward, then you can place your last ward here because you have one there. You had one originally here. You have one originally all the way up there. You have one in the lane, maybe. So like... Whether you put the lane ward or not, you have one or two on you, and then when they kill this one or this one, you have one replacement or two, and you have advanced notice as well, so you don't actually lose anything. Okay, I have no idea why this guy's here. He ults you. You're fine. You walk away from it. Uh, your team's fighting middle. It's a big problem with you. You don't have key enough to see what's going on in all these fights. This is a big fucking meme. I'm not sure why you walked in here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have no idea what you were thinking here. But. I find the ultimate, but uh. That's whatever. Okay, team another run. We don't talk about that. Okay, so this is something I want you to get in the habit of. Um, this is really, really important for you in particular. Um, and I guess like in general too, it's decent. Um, the second you uh you buy this locket, and the second you ever buy any active item right here you buy your locket ping your redemption cooldown ping your locket cooldown then when you spawn ping them both again so you know like you remind yourself and you also let your team know that you have the item is twofold because a lot of the times you like either misuse your actives don't use your actives or like i don't like oh, well i guess this is the only two you either forget you have them at all or you just like don't use them properly or forget like so yeah, like that's a good thing you can do if you find yourself doing that a lot. And I find you doing that a lot. So it's a good habit to get into. And it also reinforces the, the ping literally everything habit that you should want to get into because that's an easy way to communicate with your team. So random ass fight starts here. Not even sure how, but you guys win it. So you're with your team here. Peeling, peeling, Mr. Alt here. Um, so what I do here, um, this is only probably the only ult I'll talk about because this one's actually really big. Um, the second you see Kaz, just fucking ult him. Like, just fucking ult. Like, you want to protect your Vel'Koz's ult as much as you can. You want him to feel, basically, like, as appeal support, you just want your carries to feel as little pressure on them during the fight as possible. Um, and however you do that, might change um, depending on like who you are and who the enemy team is but like in general like situation to situation the easiest way to assess it is like is my AD carry or is my mid laner or are my carries feeling pressured and if you think there's like any chance that they're gonna feel pressured you just try to alleviate that and in this case it's just ult the fucking Kha'Zix so Vel'Koz feels safe mm -hmm. to ult and just kill him and then like that goes twofold because it would have saved you here too because uh, you I think you miss hit your locket or something. Yeah. Okay. Hit locket, okay. Right? Yeah. It's do. pretty normal. Okay. So you guys get Baron anyway because it's a like a three for three for one or something. You guys get middle. Never really had a chance to ward on that outing. That's fine. You go for Vow here and that's okay. And kills is pretty shitty versus that team. Uh, I guess sensor isn't that good for your yeah, team. I could have considered Ardent. I guess. It's not the worst. But I wanted like I wanted. To be slightly more tanky. Yeah, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Okay, so you're warning through here. Okay, so this is a big one. This one's a little harder um, for most people to understand. If you ever watch me play support or you ever watch me play jungle, I'll do this all the time though. Um, warding the rotations here is nuts. Like walking up to here and just like warding over the wall, one here and one to the right here. Like, mm -hmm. um, so I don't think you ever give me a good angle to show you, but if, well, yeah. basically that word but higher up. Um, basically, okay. So you know how like Lee Sin always queues over the wall here to get yeah. to walls. Basically, right where he queues from, and then okay. the next one, like 
to the right of this mid turret. Like, basically as far to the left as you can without getting seen by the turret from over here. You ward it from like over, over this wall. wall. Yeah, over the wall. Okay. okay. So basically, if they if they walk out of the base gate to cut to the right, the, the first ward sees them. And if they're crossing from top lane, that ward will see them. Yeah. So you see every single rotation. You only need two there. And then on the siege, this is what you do every time. You drop your control ward right here. Okay? You drop it right outside of the range. Well, it, it doesn't even matter if it's in the range of range champions hitting over the wall. Because you want to drop it like right here. Because they're always going to ward over the wall, right? Because they always, if it's dark here, it's hella scary for Poke. So they'll always ward over. You drop your control. If they try to hit your control, you, you get a free ult. And then you drop one ward over there. They'll generally drop controls to stop your ward from over the wall. And if they walk up to hit your ward, like a melee range, you ult them there too. Basically, you just want to put as much pressure on them as you can. And you do that by dropping one control here, one ward over the wall here. And then you get your rotate wards for whenever you're sieging uh, inhibitor turrets. Once again, like, having all the vision puts less pressure on your carries, because they know where everything's coming from, and that's all you can do. You know, you give them full... Well, it, it's for yourself, too. When you see everyone, it's easier to peel. It's just natural. Like, so you just yeah. want as much knowledge as you can about the cross. Um, so your camera control in these fights is kind of sus. Like, you don't even... What's going on? I have no idea what's going on in this fight. Like, why is your camera here? The fight's over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like I just pressed spacebar, so... Well, like, still, like, look how long, like, it's it's too long you spend over here, like, if you're up here, you could've saved Ezreal, maybe you end yeah. the game here, right? Like, you're just, you're not paying attention to the fight enough. Like, your, your camera control in these fights needs work. Like, a lot of the fights, like, I'm not, you're not seeing enough. And, like, part of that, like, just, like, you don't see enough of fights in general. Like, you don't F-key enough, and, like, sometimes in fights, if they're a bit spread out, you're like very slow to like adapt to what's going on and react to what's going on. It's like you're playing in slow mo. I think I've told you this before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> but yeah. So you guys need to leave here. Drop a ward on the way out. You know, like just the normal like drop it on the way out, and then like okay. the same concept. Like if you need a ward, like you're gonna once you base, you know, you're gonna reward anyway. But like. Yeah. You just drop, you just replace them, you know, it doesn't matter. So you guys go do useless dragon here. Oh, you don't do the useless dragon. That's fine too. Run, don't die. It's a useless dragon, no one gives a fuck. Word over. Run. Yeah, you don't... So, so the thing is, you know, warding over is all well and good, right? But like, it doesn't really... Like, the risk reward here is just kind of off. Or like, if you're going to ward it, just ward it from here, you know? Don't don't be close to this edge because okay. you don't you don't see enough of what's think, going yeah, on. Yeah, I wanted to hit the plant. Yeah, fuck the plant. You have three. You have wards on you. Like, just drop your wards over if you really want to give vision to your team for a steal. Because yeah, the plant. <laughs> who cares about the plant, right? Because you're you're gonna play the opposite side anyway. So you just ward over the wall from here safely. You don't want to do. You don't you don't want to put yourself at risk for something that's already like so worthless. Like it doesn't matter. Um, are you gonna wait for Val? Don't tell me you sell your control. Oh, okay, you build. Thought about it. Okay. If you're gonna do that, once again, drop your ward. Just like no point holding on to it, you know. Just say, <laughs> saving your ward for next base. Like doesn't do it. Not not how it works. <laughs> so just drop them. You know, any chance you get a chance. Like if you're gonna back soon, just fucking drop them. What is going on? What the fuck? Okay. Back up. Back up. Back up. Hold them. Oh no. Yeah. Like. You care too much about your deal, like getting it off. Like you put your, it's like you put. If we if we have everything on like a priority scale, it's like you put ult at the top, and then you put like well being like below it, and then you put like you no, 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 this is you. You put ult ult at the top. You put team well being second, and you put your well being third. When it should literally be inverted. Like you should put your well being at the top, your team's well being at two, and your ult at third. <laughs> yeah. Because your ult is important, right? But your ult's job is to make sure your team's well being is good, right? So if like you, like that's 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 how you should approach it. Like your life is worth way more than you're giving it credit for in these fights. Okay. You never dropped your ward, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so now you got your vow, you got your wards again, ping your actives coming out of base. Okay. 
guys have mid prio for a bit longer. They are basing, but like you see, people they're stuck clearing. They're stuck clearing minions. They deal with bot supers. You have full control. Um, so with you, you have mid priority and you have top priority. Um, you can't walk through here. So what I would do is you just walk up through the red buff bush, just like drop the the ward near the rafters. Drop the ward over the wall to red buff. Don't walk through here. Do not walk through this this angle. Just go back through this this ward through this bush and then go upwards. But you can drop like two wards to spot them initially crossing and then go the long way around and you'll be good. Yep. Okay, very simple stuff. Your team ints. I die here, I'm pretty sure. Um yeah, you walk up too far. I don't know what the hell you were thinking there. I was walking up to put the ward down. Yeah. Uh well okay, well where were you trying to ward here? Uh, at the tip of the red bush. Is it right here? Uh, yeah the far tip. Yeah it doesn't that ward's useless. Also, you, you could have dropped, you like drop you walk a little too far up to place it anyway. You could have placed it a little further back. And then, I think this flash is okay, it just needs to be faster. Okay, well, okay, you just need to hurt your old, actually. Yeah. And then I think you actually might have lived. But that's whatever. Okay. The, the essence of the play was fine, the execution was bad. Two different things. Uh, you did place your vow, okay, that's fine. Don't have your priority, can't do anything, Vel cause dies. Game falls apart here, I'm pretty sure. The block, lock it. Questionable ult. <laughs> Whoa, holy die. It's insane. Okay, so. At this point, now you guys are on the back foot, so you have to really, really be looking out for any of your free warding opportunities. This is about the best you're gonna get. Um, you see people bot side. And you, you're while well, you don't have mid priority, uh, you don't not have it either. So this is a good chance to go ward, and it's a very important juncture because the Baron's actually up now. He's not even like posturing for it. Like if you guys lose vision of it for any time, you could actually definitely lose it. Okay, so you have three controls. So the first one always goes to where you just put your green ward. Okay. okay. First one always goes there, and then you drop your normal wards out here. And then generally you want someone else to put this down, but if there's no one else to put it down, then you put yours down. Right. Right. Oh, so just use two charges like that? Yeah, you have three. Who cares at this point in the game, right? You're a full up you're a full build. You're a full build. Your last your last slot is always control wards until you have enough to buy your full life full last item. Okay. It's fine. Okay, so you're playing where you should be. Good. In the pocket behind your carries. Okay. Poking, poking, poking. Okay. Decent vision. GP's inting. GP's inting. GP's inting. Uh, not sure what your team is doing. There's a very split decision here. Kazix realizes they're on the Baron. Uh, your jungler is nowhere dead. to be seen. He was dead before this. Okay. So I, that's why I pinged GP back when he committed. Okay, the salt is good. And GP gets salted, and now this fight is probably over. I can't really see what's going on. Okay. Drop a control word here. Okay, that's fine too, I guess. But yeah. Basically, um, once the fight, uh, once people are out of the fight and you're like reassessing it, um, but like it's still like a very tense situation. That's like generally where you want to just like start sweeping the area of vision however you can, so your team can get free pot shots in. And like, basically, you guys are kind of like bluffing in this case. Like you don't really want to fight. And like, if you take away all their vision, then they're less inclined to want to fight you because they don't want to walk in blind. Because you don't want to fight. This guy literally just inted, and this guy inted a while ago, so he's coming up. So it's gonna be a four v five if you start a fight. So you just want to clear out everything before they realize. Wait a minute, it's four v five. Let's just walk into them. So you just want to clear everything out to stall basically as long as you can before they realize. Wait, we can just strong arm them because it's four v five. Okay. Uh, once again, don't hit these. Like, it's no fucking point. What's in the money? No point. You can be with your team instead at the dragon. Now you're late to the play. This is a recurring thing. And then you just get literally just lit up by Caitlyn. And yeah. You Oh, do you not have the... Huh? Oh, you don't. There's a setting where, like, your screen will flash if you're taking damage. Oh, okay. You should turn that on. <laughs> I actually did not realize until I was dead. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's actually really nice. I turned that on. Most of the time, I'm watching the minimap as I walk anyway, but... Okay, and I think the game just ends here, right? Yeah, pretty much. 
Okay. So things to take away from this. You need to ping everything. You need to ping your item timers, especially, so you never make those mistakes again. Um, your ultimate, um, can consider taking it off smartcast if you want. I know you're fiddling with it during the game. That's up to you. Um, whenever you see people walking with you so you can get wards, take it. Um, ward deeper. Um, already talked about the percentages thing. Um, priority and team fight. You first, team second, ult third. Um, and fucking watch the fights, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on half the time, and I'm watching a first person POV. That's unacceptable. Like, God, you really need to work on your camera work. There's no other nice way to put that. And yeah, just stop being stingy with your wards and stop being a pussy with your wards. Like, use angles over walls and ward deeper. And ward more often. Never ever base with any charges unless you literally walked out, got chunked, and then had to go back to get more wards. But like mm -hmm. that that probably is like a problem that shouldn't have that shouldn't happen in and of itself. But like aside from that, you should always have zero wards when returning to base. Because there's no reason not to. Like <laughs> the the joke that like uh, I like to make is uh stop saving your wards for your base. <laughs> like doesn't mm -hmm. do anything. <laughs> Uh, about the ultimates, you know, yeah, they were kind of shitty overall, but like that happens sometimes. So it's not a big deal to worry about. Like that's just literally comes with playing more. Anything else to ask? No, I think I got it. It's mostly like there's all the obvious mechanical problems, but then the lava just comes from like just where I'm putting my ward and when the ward. Yeah, because because I know for like myself generally, like after lighting. Like, if it's very obvious where I'm supposed to be, then yeah, I kind of figured it, but like, sometimes it's just like, oh, I, I don't know where I should be. Yeah, and that's a common thing with people like, who... Like, for example, your my car like, I usually would try to stick with my carries, but if they base, or yeah. like, you know... Yeah. So basically, um, if you're ever in a situation where like, your carries have to base or something, or like, you can't walk in, you literally just get this word, and you get this word, like the super shallow ones, and then just wait for your team. You don't walk in alone, because like... You say like, oh, I need vision, right? But like, if you walk in alone because your carries are based and you don't have priority and you die, then that's like that you just lose Baron there anyway, right? So no point walking in alone. And um, what was the last thing I want to say? Oh yeah, like the stuff like when people watch this game, like if someone like watched this game, like I'd say like self mod reviewing. Or like just like thought about like why did I lose this game? Like thinking about it like in the queue of playing their before playing their next one. Most people would say like I lost this game because my ult sucked. Or like I lost this game because like I wasn't paying attention to my screen and Caitlyn killed me when I was going to Dragon and we lost at the dragon fight. When in reality, like there's like all the other things that you could have done. Like you guys literally killed bot and hib. Like you were not very far from winning this game. Uh -huh. Like if you had just, like, cleaned up, like, the early mid, like, I didn't even watch the fucking lane phase, but, like, literally just cleaned up, like, the mid part of, like, just literally, like, I pointed out so many, like, if someone goes back and watches this session and, like, counts how many times I tell you you missed a ward opportunity, like, those in and of itself, like, will win you many, many games. And the thing is, you won't probably notice it because, like, those aren't the things that, like, people notice, like, even in analysis, they'd be like, oh my god, like, Smoothie's warding was so good that game that it just won them everything. I was like, no one's like, yeah, they're gonna see Jensen got a five man ult. Why did he get a five man ult? Because he literally saw them all walk in because they were warding properly. Like, it's harder to notice those kinds of things, and it's harder to notice those deficiencies either because it's just like my my AD carry didn't know how to position right. Like, uh -huh. it's very easy. Like, you can apply to everything, but like a monkey position if he literally sees where everyone's coming at the same time, like at, at all times, right? Like, yeah. And what you want to do is, like, those wars just make it so that even the worse your team is, like, the e the easier it is for them to perform. And that's just, like, the essence of, like, of support. I don't, even, I don't even realize the value of those wars, because if I see them there, it doesn't mean that much to me. <laughs> exactly. And that's why it's hard to notice, like, it goes both ways, right? It's hard to notice the value of them, but it's also hard to quantify how much you're losing by not placing them, right? Or not placing them properly, because uh -huh. if you don't know that they're improper or proper in the first place... How can you know if they have any effect at all? So uh -huh. that's the crux of it. All right.